for the WWE Hall of Fame is March 31st. And we have a interesting pick, not because uh, not because it's not really des- not that it's not deserved. It's just some people would think this would be unexpected, especially if they didn't know the history of this man. Theodore R. Long, or we know him as Teddy Long, the tag team making, Undertaker match making, general manager from SmackDown several years ago. But he hasn't just been a general manager. People don't need to, people don't realize that. I mean, he's been a referee, and as far as refereeing concerned, I mean, he wasn't really the best, but I mean, it says a lot to where. He was a referee at the uh, at the Chi Town Rumble where Ricky Steamboat won the NWA World Title in those famous Flair Steamboat matches. So you have to be a good referee to do those. I mean, and he and he was was he on the WCW side for the invasion? I don't remember exactly. I want to say he was, but probably maybe not. Maybe he switched to the WF. I don't remember exactly. I think he came before that all happened. So I want to uh, probably not. But, you know, I mean, he has bent the rules as a referee at some times, especially at Clash of the Champions in 1989, where he blatantly made a flash count against uh, to allow Mike Rotunda, which was pre-IRS for sure, probably pre-IRS days, or maybe maybe after that first run in the U.S. Express, and after Steve Williams against the Road Warriors of all people for the NBA World Tag Titles. I mean, after that, you know, he was relieved of his refereeing duties and became a manager at that time, I mean, having names, rest, uh, managing names like Doom, uh, and uh, the Skyscrapers, and so many more, and I mean, he was, yeah, okay, that does answer my question. He was referee, yes, uh, 98, so it was before the Invasion Angle. But most people remember him as a general manager, even though he was a manager of such people like Mark Henry, uh, Jazz, who got the Women's Championship, and who could forget the infamous five-minute white boy challenges of Rodney Mack. I mean, that was fucking entertainment right there. But, uh, you know, people will just remember her as a general manager, which, to his credit, was the longest reigning, not the longest reigning, but probably the longest tenured SmackDown general managers, probably longer than even longer than Stephanie, now that I think about it. Um... As well as an ECW general manager, for those people that have all those memes of men making tag team matches and one on one with The Undertaker, and so many other things that became famous with him. Uh, but, you know, he also was a wrestler at some point, even, you know, when I, when I say wrestler, it's very loosely to the point where it was maybe with a match with Eric Bischoff or Spike Dudley or something similar around his size and skill set. He wasn't, you know, pro. It wasn't going to be world champion, no doubt. There's no way, especially in his with his age, there was no way he's going to be a full time wrestler. So it was just every once in a while matches, uh, especially with Eric Bischoff, with the help of the Boogeyman, mind you. Uh, but but still, I mean, there was so much stuff that he did as a general manager that that me trying to talk about it doesn't do do it justice, including when he eventually lost his job. At WrestleMania with the Team Teddy Team Johnny matches. Uh, but as far as wrestlers he's managed, it goes from a list of, it's really a who's who of people. Uh, like such as D'Lo Brown, Johnny B. Bad, pretty Mark Merrill, of course. Like we said, the infamous five minute white boy challenges and even sometimes double white boy challenges of Rodney Mack. Uh, people like Norman the Lunatic, who would later on become Friar Ferguson in WWF, which didn't last long, obviously, and probably better known as Bastion Booger. Uh, Mark Callis, who people might know as The Undertaker, a part of the Skyscrapers team. Uh, the One Man Gang, Mark Henry, as we said earlier, Jazz, Eddie Guerrero, Joey Maggs. I'm surprised as Joey Maggs was a, uh, the person he managed. Even surprisingly, Craig Pittman. And if you don't know who that is, that's pretty much a guy who was brought in as a drill sergeant to face a soldier in Cobra. I believe it was Fall Brawl. Probably the quickest match in WCW history. Uh, but yeah, that was a thing. Uh, but even bigger names like Chris Jericho, God forbid, Jim Powers, 
Hard Work Bobby Walker? I, why do I not remember that? What the fuck? But people like Ice Train, Rosie, The Reflection of Perfection, Mark Gendrak, Ezekiel Jackson, and The Great Khali, but he's probably more known as a manager, per se, of teams like the NWA Tag Champions in the masked duo known as Doom, which was uh, eventually revealed to be Ron Simmons and Butch Reed. The Skyscrapers uh, was originally Sid Vicious and Mark Callis, under, a.k.a. The Undertaker, but but until he, he went to the WWE or F at the time as The Undertaker, he was eventually replaced by Dan Spivey, who would eventually become Whale and Mercy, which if you look at Whale and Mercy's gimmick, you could take that and have him as a as Bray Wyatt as a second generation of that gimmick. Which is fucking great. Have you ever seen Whale and Mercy? It's amazing. Uh, teams like Marcus Bagwell, aka Buff Bagwell, and Two Gold Scorpio, and the infamous... Buggin' and Buggin' Enterprises, much like well, people like D'Lo Brown, Rodney Mack, Rosie, Jazz, Mark Jindrak, Christopher Nowinski of all people, that's a shocker, and Mark Henry. And of course, the infamous Team Teddies. The first one being Santino Morella, Kofi Kingston, or truth Zack Ryder, Gregory Kali, Booker T, and Hornswoggle as the mascot. And Team Teddy 2, which was a historic... 15-man tag team match for the 50th anniversary of SmackDown, which included his team of Sheamus, Jack Swagger, Mark Henry, the Usos, Los Matadores, and El Torito. Of course, Hornswoggle was on the other side as the fucking Slater Gator, the actual Gator, which, of course, two, minute, two midgets in WWE's logic equals a 15th man. Obviously, half and half. But as, as far as matches is concerned, I mean, he's made a lot of great matches. Like the last ride match, which is, for those who don't know, is basically a a casket match and an ambulance match combined. You Basically, the winner would put their opponent in a hearse, thus making that final last ride to a grave. And even the first ever barbed wire steel cage match. And for those who don't understand that, let me explain that very quickly. Uh... Basically, it's a steel cage, but barbed wire is surrounding the top of the cage. So, therefore, you cannot climb over the cage. You cannot go out up through the door because that is locked. The only way the winner is pinfall or submission, or perhaps if you're Big Show, maybe break the door, break the cage door or something, break the chain, something. You can't, I mean, you can climb over, but you're risking going over that barbed wire. So, that is something there. And, of course, making. A King of the Ring tournament, a SmackDown exclusive, which gave us the legendary King Booker. There were several things he did as a general manager. Which included a night uh, at Booker T's Reality of Wrestling. And as we go back, we'll, we'll continue with Mr. Long. 